2022 has been yet another banner year at SpaceX. We've seen the Falcon 9 elevated to the point where it's being flown at least once per week, Starlink has gone global, Starbase Texas has grown, Starbase Florida is well underway, and the Starship is getting ready to cap off the year with a historic test flight. But there's even more to look forward to in 2023. SpaceX has been no stranger to setting new precedents, and the next year will see the envelope pushed even further. We're looking forward to the Polaris Dawn mission that will take a crewed Dragon capsule to the highest Earth orbit ever flown, and conduct the first commercial spacewalk in SpaceX-designed EVA suits. We'll see the first ever Starship and Super Heavy landing attempts with the Mechazilla Tower and Chopstick Arms, the first Starship launch from the Space Coast on Cape Canaveral, and we'll see Starlink reach a new level of capability with their version 2 satellite cluster. Even for such an ambitious company as SpaceX, that's a lot to accomplish in just one year. So let's talk about how they're going to get it done. Over three years of design, development, building, testing, exploding, and more building are all culminating right now at Starbase Texas as we prepare for the first orbital flight attempt of the Starship Super Heavy rocket. This is the biggest, heaviest, most powerful rocket that has ever been assembled. Sure, other companies have dreamed of something like this, made concept designs, but SpaceX have actually built it a fully reusable interplanetary heavy lift cargo ship that can expand humanity's reach to the moon, Mars, and beyond. But first, it has to get off the ground and reach Earth's orbit, which again, considering the immense size, weight, and complexity of this ship, that is no small feat. We are anticipating the first launch to happen sometime within the next month or so. Elon has predicted late November, and we've generally learned to ignore Elon timelines for the most part, but even NASA is currently forecasting that Starship will fly before the end of December 2022. Though, considering their track record with SLS, they might be just as unreliable a narrator as Elon at this point. Anyway, the stage is set at Starbase Texas. We have the Mechazilla Tower with its hydraulic chopstick arms that have proven themselves capable of lifting and stacking a Starship and Super Heavy booster. Underneath that rocket booster is an orbital launch mount that SpaceX has spent this entire year working on. This is more than just a stand to hold the rocket. This is a complex machine that is responsible for fueling the booster core, spin-starting its 33 Raptor engines, and then releasing the booster at the moment of liftoff as the launch mount desperately works to contain the energy released by those engines. The plan for that orbital flight is still up in the air. We know that the Starship upper stage will aspire to reach low Earth orbit, circle around in space, and then come down into the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. We don't know what that's going to look like, whether it will be a hard splashdown or whether we are going to be able to watch a soft water landing attempt. This is what SpaceX started doing with the earliest Falcon 9 landing attempts. Before they even tried it with the drone ships, they wanted to see if the booster could touch down softly onto the surface of the ocean. On their first attempt, the booster landed hard and exploded on impact with the surface of the water. And that's likely what the Starship will do too, if the heat shield survives re-entry, but we'll just have to wait and find out. The Super Heavy booster is slated to come straight back down after delivering the ship into orbit, and it's likely going to splash down in the Gulf of Mexico just off the coast from Starbase. But SpaceX has revealed an alternative plan. They have left it open to attempt a return to launch site, with the booster where it would land back at the tower and be caught by the chopstick arms. This is super ambitious for a first flight, and it's putting the entire Starbase launch pad facility at risk of explosive damage. But there's a first time for everything, right? I think what SpaceX are getting at is that they will make a judgment call based on how the booster is performing on its way back down. If everything checks out and they have full control over the flight of the booster, then maybe they bring it home for a landing. Starbase Texas is going to continue to play a massive role for SpaceX in the year to come. If you check a recent video that the company published called Life at Starbase, 
you can see that they are very clearly making this place a home for the SpaceX team. Starbase in Texas is likely to continue on as a research and development center for the Starship program. For 2023, we are looking forward to seeing the first prototypes of the HLS Lunar Starship emerge from those tents and begin testing. Something else that we are definitely keeping an eye on is how SpaceX is developing their second Starship facility. This one is at the Kennedy Space Center on Cape Canaveral, Florida, the heart of the American space program, the home of Apollo, the space shuttle, Artemis, and soon to be home of Starship as well. SpaceX is not only building a new launch tower for Starship at their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy Launch Complex 39A, but they are also building a whole new Starship production factory just down the road. In time, the Star Factory at Kennedy will grow to be equal to what SpaceX has at Boca Chica. This new Florida launch site is likely to be the spot where Starship will operate its commercial satellite launches, missions for NASA and Space Force, and even their flights to the moon. If you want to learn all about what SpaceX is up to in Florida, check out the most recent video that we've posted on our second channel, The Space Race. This is a channel where we focus entirely on the latest SpaceX developments, alongside news from the global aerospace industry and scientific discoveries about our solar system. So if that sounds like something you're into, check it out. The success of the Starship is going to lead directly into a major new era for Starlink. Up until now, the SpaceX satellite internet service has been growing a constellation of around 2,000 satellites in low Earth orbit. And with that density and capability, Starlink is now able to provide high-speed, low-latency internet service to the majority of the world. They've even achieved coverage over the polar regions. We've also seen that capability put to the ultimate test as Starlink provides the only source of communication on the battlefields of Ukraine. It's been a pretty wild year. But everything that we've seen so far from Starlink has been essentially just a proof-of-concept experiment. We haven't even gotten to the real deal yet. Starlink's version 2 satellite will be larger and more powerful, taking the speed and reach of the network to a whole new level. But those larger and heavier satellites need a larger and more powerful rocket than the Falcon 9 to deploy them at high volume. So, the Starship is essential to getting Starlink to its full potential. We've actually just seen a batch of Starlink V2 satellites delivered to the Starship production facility at Boca Chica, and we know that SpaceX has already developed a new method for deploying the satellites from the Starship's massive cargo bay. They're going to simply just open up a slot inside of the ship and spit the satellites out directly into their orbital paths, kind of like a Pez dispenser. This is going to be a huge mission for SpaceX in 2023. Polaris Dawn. This is slated to launch as early as March 2023 and will be a commercial crewed mission using the Falcon 9 rocket and a Crew Dragon capsule. The Polaris mission is being funded and commanded by Jared Isaacman, who you might remember as the person behind the first civilian flight of the Dragon capsule to orbit on Inspiration 4. That mission was documented in a Netflix series. Jared is coming back for Polaris Dawn, which will take the Dragon to orbit higher above the Earth than any other crewed mission before. Obviously, people have gone to the moon, that's further away, but this will be the highest sustained orbit around the Earth, and that path will take them through the Van Allen radiation belt, which is a concentration of the cosmic rays and solar winds that are held back by the magnetic fields of the Earth's core. If we are going to explore the solar system and put people on the moon for long durations and send crews to Mars, then we need to understand what exposure to deep space does to the human body. The Polaris Dawn crew are going to take the time to study the effects on their own bodies as they pass through that concentrated radiation belt. This will be unprecedented and critically important research. There are four people on this crew, they might come back as the Fantastic Four, we don't know. Okay, they probably won't, but that would be kind of cool. Anyway, Polaris Dawn will also feature the very first commercial spacewalk. The crew will exit the Dragon capsule at an altitude of 700 kilometers above the Earth, which is 300 kilometers higher than the maximum altitude of the International Space Station. 
This will also be the first test of the new SpaceX-designed extravehicular activity suits. This is a big deal because, again, if we're going to build a human presence on the moon and Mars, we are going to need a hell of a lot of spacesuits, and NASA has been doing a really bad job of keeping up with their spacesuit development, so this will be great to see even more options proven to be effective. And as if that wasn't enough, Polaris Dawn will be testing the capability of Starlink to function as a deep space communication network. And that's just the first Polaris mission. They've got a schedule that takes them even further past the known boundaries of human spaceflight. They will even be conducting the first crewed launch and landing of the Starship rocket. But that's all going to be at least a couple of years down the line. For now, just looking ahead to 2023, with the Starship going operational and reaching a launch cadence of at least once per month from two launch sites, with Starlink growing and becoming even more capable, with the Polaris program leveraging SpaceX technology to make bold new discoveries about human spaceflight, this is going to be one hell of a year. So, just a reminder to subscribe to our Space Race channel if you haven't already. That's where you're going to find weekly content following all of these stories as they develop, and even more. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.